Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. And today I'm excited to return to Madeline C. Morris. I'm continuing to do a series of deep dives on books that were written in the 60s and 70s that are out of print, kind of lost, primarily from a publishing house called Parker Publishing, which I've tried to track down and kind of have an idea who who owns the rights of some of these, but they have just expired. The, The books are out of print and there are techniques in some of these books that are just fantastic. Check out my previous episode on Madeline C. Morris and the Miracle of Manaforce. Also, check out the Manaforce Meditation. Those were created around some of these basic techniques, which go back beyond Madeline C. Morris. She is talking about a kahuna teaching, which brings in breath, brings in energy, and then you can use it to communicate with your higher self. She also wrote another book that really appeals to me and is just as good, if not better, And that is called The Amazing Power of Solar Kinetics. I'm very interested in solar kinetics because I have started to form a very unique bond with the sun in general. Of course, we all love the sun, but after reading The Law of One Material and learning about the Logos or Logos, check out my episode on the Logos in The Law of One, you understand that the sun is a living being, that most likely created our solar system or was a big part of it and continues to be the creative force in our solar system. And if that's true, we can actually look up and see this creator of our solar system right now. It's a weird thing to change the way you think about the sun. It's this all powerful thing. Can we communicate with the sun? Can we channel the sun? I even have asked other channelers this and if it was possible. I have personally been finding my meditations to be very powerful when I sit outside in the sun at a certain time of day when the sun's hitting my face in a certain way. It is much more powerful and I know there's something to it. So how can we use this sun to help us to create our own reality. First of all, understanding that our reality is made up of light and all the densities that we move through are densities of light. What is the primary source of light in our solar system? It's the sun. That's what you're made up. You're made up of the sun. Everything around you is made up of the sun vibrating at different frequencies. So if we can tap into the sun, if we can communicate with the sun, we're communicating with a very focalized aspect of the creator. So I think she kind of does a pretty good job of talking about this connection with a technique called solar kinetics. This book is like those old books is very appealing. When you read the book jacket and cover, it says the amazing power of solar kinetics at last you can harness two of the most powerful creative forces known to man. One is the center of our entire planetary system, the sun. The other is the limitless power of your own mind. Combine these two dynamic forces and you have the most powerful energy known called solar kinetics at your command, ready to bring your wildest cravings and desires to you from the cosmic world. The only difference between the haves and the have-nots is that the haves know how to bring wealth into their lives, says Madeline C. Morris. Now you can join them. For revealed in this startling book is the secret ritual that contacts the sun spirits to catapult money, love, and power into your life. Now you'll discover how to gain titanic riches with the secret of magic wealth trigger. Change your life with the fantastic good luck invocation. Have the solar kinetic vitality generator give you perfect health and renewed vigor. Command others to do your bidding with the proven solar kinetic power ritual. Protect yourself from negative forces and psychic attack and win friends or bring the one you desire to your side. 
And these amazing powers can be yours in just seconds. Anyone can do it. The real beauty of solar kinetics is that it is so simple to command, and yet the most effective way known to turn your very desire into reality. Just sit back in a chair and let the sun spirits invoke the almighty power of the sun to shower you with rays of wealth and happiness. It's all spelled out for you step by step in these thrilling pages. Another side note, if you follow my channel and you check out the Law of One teachings, which is a channel work that talks about the universe, they say that higher density beings like ourselves, after future incarnations, once you reach into the sixth and a half densities, then you live in the sun. And it's possible that there are sun rays that are actually living. I don't think that I have a way of comprehending that, but it, it surely is a delightful idea to think about. The first chapter I find to be the most interesting, and she begins by saying that this will tell you how you can bring in anything in this world that you want with the magic of solar kinetics. Nothing is beyond your reach. Now, you can have wealth, new cars, a new home, beautiful jewelry, or world travel. All of this and more can be yours through the use of this dynamic cosmic power. You will be shown how to tap the mighty power of solar energy to increase your creative abilities. You will learn to zero in on this fabulous dynamic force and draw it into yourself. It will turn you into a virtual giant of creativity. You will be able to direct this power toward anything you desire and it will become yours. You will learn how all of this can be accomplished with a simple five-minute ritual that will change your life. Millicent used the magic wealth trigger explained in this chapter to get a diamond pendant. Jack found a gold mine through the use of this fantastic wealth finder. You will learn how a retiree with a meager income found a wealth and a life of ease, freed from financial worries. All of your ideas about wealth being beyond your reach will be changed after you read this. Power center of our planetary system. The beautiful, the magnificent, awesome sun has been an object of worship since the dawn of time. Even the most primitive societies recognize a power in the sun beyond its ability to give off warmth and light. Indeed, they realized that in a way it was a giver of life. Without its beneficent rays, nothing on earth could grow. Because of the vital importance of the sun to man's very existence, forms of sun worship sprang up all over the world through the ages. The early Greeks even attributed healing ability to the power of the sun. Earlier civilizations recognized a subtle esoteric energy that the sun possessed. They realized that this power could be used to enhance their prayers and use of mental visualization. Modern man has misinterpreted early man's relationship to the sun. It is now believed by most scholars that these older civilizations merely worshipped the sun as a god. It is true that it was believed by many that the sun was a god, but this belief came about when they learned of the spiritual assistance that could be granted from the sun. In a sense, they called on the sun spirits to help them. Modern civilization has altered the original concept of its religions so that, so that there no longer exists a religion in its original pristine form. The same thing happened to some of the later peoples whose ancestors had known the true esoteric power of the sun. As this knowledge waned, the sun became merely an object of worship, and the real power that brought the worship about was forgotten. Modern scholars unearthed this practice of sun worship. They mistakenly accepted the esoteric appearance of the sun as a god. 
The true inner meaning of the sun's mighty spiritual power was lost to man. It is this knowledge that I wish to bring back to you who read this book. Sun Spirits, Your Invisible Helpers Solar kinetics is the science of tapping the power from the pure spirit essence of the sun. The spirit aspect of the sun has intelligence and can be directed with mind power. To make it easier for you to understand this rather abstract principle of the sun, let me draw an analogy for you. Imagine that each sunbeam is a life stream or spirit endowed with intelligence. Think of it as a sun spirit, a living being. In a way, it is since it can be directed to serve you and it will do so. With the use of solar kinetics, you can direct these sun spirits like an army of soldiers who are ready to go forth into the universe to bring you a glorious array of treasures from any corner of the earth and even beyond. Their mighty power comes from their mother, the sun, with her billions upon billions of atoms of stored energy. As you perform each solar kinetic ritual in this, let your imagination send these little power-filled beings out to serve your every need and fulfill your every desire, your solar antenna. How can you contact this power from the sun, you may ask. That is what this book is all about. By the time you finish reading it, you will have this mighty power at your disposal. You will be able to draw on it at any time you have a problem. With the help of these sun spirits, your problems will disappear like a puff of smoke. The first step is to harness the sun's cosmic energy to your wonderful creative mind. This is done with the use of your solar antenna. Yes, you have such an antenna. It is part of your low self. It has the ability to extend a part of itself in any direction as far as you wish it to go. It can act in exactly the same manner as the antenna on your radio. Consider briefly the makeup of the trinity of man so you can better understand what your low self is. Man is composed basically of three parts. Each of these parts or bodies is a complete entity with separate functions. I will give you a sketchy description of the high self and middle self, but it is the low self that we are most concerned with since it is this part of you that will provide your solar antenna. Your high self is the overseer of your complete unit. In most people, this self resides outside the human physical body because the vibrations are not high enough to permit entry of this most spiritual part of man. In my book, The Miracle of Mana Force, Secret of Wealth, Love and Power, I tell of a method of development that will enable you to bring your high self into your physical body. But unless you have had some training of this nature, your high self will remain outside your body during this life. The mind of the high self is the soul mind. This is the pure God mind that is all-knowing. Your middle self is the personality self that is born with the infant body. Its mind is the logical, reasoning mind that uses the brain cells as a sort of computer repository. It functions strictly within the framework of the five senses and the three-dimensional world most people function solely with the use of this mind. These individuals do not realize the tremendous power that lies dormant within them. So they go through life bounded by limitation, lack, illness, and privation. They see no chance of ever attaining their heart's desire. So they settle for what they have and say, it is God's will. Of course, this is a travesty of their benevolent creator's will. Can anyone believe that a wise and loving creator could wish his children to live in such a negative manner when his entire nature is creative and positive? Most of our creative functions are accomplished by the low self. Do not be deceived by the term low self. This does not mean that this part of you is base or low. 
as the term is usually used. The term low self means that this part of man is subservient to the middle self. The middle self gives instructions and directions which the low self carries out. The mind of the low self is the subconscious. It controls all of the involuntary actions of the body, such as breathing, heartbeat, digestion, and so on. It has many other functions, including those studied by psychiatry. Some of the most important attributes of the subconscious mind of the low self lie undiscovered by modern psychiatry, including the ability to stretch out a finger of shadowy substance, which is the body of the low self. This finger of the low self can reach out to infinity to accomplish a desired end. It is this finger of the low self that will act as your solar antenna. It will show you how to reach out with your solar antenna and bring in the infinite cosmic energy of the sun. This is the power that is the basic energy of solar kinetics. Optokinetic Wealth Amplifier Yes, you can amplify your wealth. You can build an optokinetic wealth amplifier with your own wonderful creative processes. You can literally pull in the boundless cosmic energy from the sun, amplify it many times, and have this fantastic power for your use. Following are the steps that will accomplish this amazing feat. 1. Sit quietly in a chair for a few moments. Chant the word OM three times. Do this by taking a deep breath and then sounding the long O of OM, holding this for a few seconds close to the mouth and chant the OM. Keep this going until you are out of breath. Now repeat this chant. The idea is to keep the word OM going for as long as you can hold your breath saying oh for about half the time and mmm for the other half. This chant raises your vibrations and prepares your mental receiver as well as your amplifier. 2. Now, with your eyes closed, visualize the sun. See it as an orb of dynamic, swirling, infinite power. Sense its benevolent warmth and energy. 3. With your eyes still closed, bring in the rays of solar energy you have just visualized. Feel them enter the top of your head and gather in the area of the center of the forehead. This is the location of the third eye. At this point, you've automatically built your solar antenna. A psychic would see a finger of shadowy substance vividly lit up, extending out of the top of your head. Believe me, this is very real. It is not an imaginary thing. Let me digress a moment to tell you why this is so. Our physical world is interpenetrated by another world or dimension of a much less dense substance. Even though the substance of this other dimension is not ordinarily visible to our eyes, it exists in a very real state. Because it is of a higher vibratory nature, it can be readily molded by mind power. It is in this dimension that the pattern is created for everything that finally manifests in our physical world. Nothing can exist in the material plane until it has been first created on the astral level of existence. It is this principle that we are working with in the erection of our optokinetic wealth amplifier. This is the way in which man has given dominion over his world and all that it contains. Since he is the creator of everything in his world, he is responsible for his own state of affairs. He can be rich or poor. Whichever he chooses, he has the power to change any outer manifestations of lack in his life any time he wishes. His creator built this creative power into him, but the use of it was left up to the individual. In no way will the creator interfere. After birth, man was put on his own. Information such as you find in this book is put before you to remind you that you have all of this creative power 
to use. I believe that those of us who receive this information are guided to disseminate it so that man will not lose sight of his divine creative inheritance. How much money do you want? Before I reveal the last half of the optokinetic wealth amplifier, it is advisable that you decide just what you want to create. How much money do you want? As much as I can get, you may say. But do you really mean this? How much money do you believe you are entitled to? How much money do you believe you can handle? These questions lead to the real problem that keeps most people from enjoying a more comfortable existence. They believe that privation is their lot in life, so they feel guilty if they ask for enough to relieve this privation. Their creator gave them the ability to bring into their lives all of the wonderful things needed for living an expanded life, but they are afraid to use it. Why? Here is the real underlying cause of want in a world of plenty. On all sides, we hear that those who have must give up a large share of their money to provide for those who haven't created it for themselves. But this is not the answer. It is indeed blessed to give, but how much? Shouldn't those who haven't learned how to provide for themselves be taught how? It is time for man to start using the fantastic creative power that he was given in the beginning. The only difference between the haves and the have-nots is that the haves know how to bring wealth into their lives. Now you can join this group, but first, you must rid yourself of your sense of limitation. So many people believe that it is not spiritual to want money. They believe that they can only ask for money to help others, but not themselves. Are you not as important in the scheme of things as anyone else? I constantly get letters from people saying, I only want enough money to pay my bills and help others. Then their letters usually go on to tell me how badly off they are financially but they say nothing about wanting to improve their lot. The whole tone of their letters tell me about how miserable they are in their privation. Yet, they do not ask how they can improve it. Why? They are afraid to. Why should anyone be afraid to want to better his lot in life? The answer to this, that has been conditioned by others to believe that to want money is wrong. So whenever the time comes for him to ask for more money, he suffers from a guilt complex. So he reduces his request to the point where he will get very little benefit from what he does receive. Cosmic law says that you can only receive what you believe you can receive. So you have two choices in setting the sum of money you wish to receive. You can either change your belief about how much can come to you, or you can limit the amount to fit your belief. How much simpler it is to change your belief and raise your ceiling to the sky. God did not create this wonderful world of ours, only to deny its benefits to his children. He gave you the power to create and receive this vast abundance of wealth. Accept it as your God-given right it is not wrong to desire and attain vast wealth for yourself. The real error lies in not using your wonderful creative mind that was given to you so that you could create the kind of world for yourself that you truly desire. So search your inner feelings. Is there any reluctance to ask for the amount of money you would really like to have if there is, talk to yourself about this. Realize that the world is yours if you have the courage to reach out and take your share. There is enough to go around. Have you ever wondered why the wealth of the world has never been evenly distributed? Even if you were to divide up the world's goods evenly between all people, it wouldn't be long before most of it would be in the hands of the same people it had been taken away from. 
This is because those people have a wealth consciousness. They draw money to them as a magnet draws iron filings. So open up your own doorway so that the wealth may enter. By all means, don't fear some shadowy retribution if wealth should come. Now you are ready to decide how much money you want. When you set your sum, do not set it higher than you can honestly believe can come to you. You probably have a lifetime of conditioning behind you that has a certain ceiling on your notion of your monetary worth. As you review the foregoing, this ceiling will rise. But to start, set a believable amount. When this comes to you, you can raise the amount somewhat. I'd like to tell you a little story to illustrate this principle of not rising above what you can believe in. There was an insurance man who had a mediocre territory. Since he was a good salesman, he was able to average $15,000 a year out of it. His insurance company decided to move him to a much better territory as a reward for his perseverance. After a couple of years, they noted that he still averaged $15,000 a year. The company was disappointed and decided to relegate him to an extremely undesirable area. Much to their surprise, this salesman was able to average $15,000 a year from this territory. This story illustrates the result of putting a ceiling on your capacity to bring in money. So get rid of those feelings of inadequacy. You are as powerful as anyone in the world. With the help of the optokinetic wealth amplifier, you can raise yourself to any heights you can visualize. There is no limitation except that which you impose upon yourself. The optokinetic wealth amplifier utilizes some of the most powerful creative forces in nature. You will be shown how to amplify these forces and direct them to your goal. Whatever you can visualize will come to you. It doesn't matter how much, as long as you can believe you deserve it. So cast off those self-imposed shackles and let the optokinetic wealth amplifier change your life to one of abundance and good fortune. Remember, the sky is the limit. Magic Videoscope to Project Untold Wealth Now that you have decided the amount of money you want to bring to yourself, what will you do with it when it comes? Money translates itself into the things you wish to buy with it. It really isn't the money itself that you wish to manifest. It is actually the objects or conditions that you feel are missing in your life. This is why the desire for money is a good thing. It is really the desire to expand and include in your life more of the world's bounty. In our society, this desire is satisfied with money. In fact, whenever there are more than a few people, some system of barter is necessary. In earlier times, when a man traded his goat for a hand-honed sledgehammer, the goat became money. In other times, nuggets of gold, jewels, and pieces of silver became money. During the early days in America, even hogs became a medium of exchange. Many of the banks dealt in hog certificates, which were actually a promise to deliver a certain number of hogs at any given time. So you see, the medium of exchange is rather incidental to what it will buy. The money itself is merely a transitory thing to be handed over to someone else so it will bring to you what you desire to own. I am sure that you have heard many times how necessary it is to have a definite goal if you want to accomplish something. This same principle applies to the use of the magic video scope. So at this time, give some real thought to what you are going to project onto it. If you want the money to buy a new car, picture the car in every detail. Know what make and model you want. Go to a showroom and sit in the car. If possible, ask for a demonstration so you can drive it. Get the feel of it. Imagine that you already own it. Above all, build a tremendous desire for this car. Put all the feeling into this desire that you possibly can. Now you are ready to use your magic video scope. The video scope is a mental screen that you use to play out your little drama of having your wish fulfilled. 
When you want to create something that you desire, always visualize it as already in your possession. In this manner, you have put it into your life. If you picture it as something you will get in the future, that's where it will always stay in the future. It will never quite get to you. The creative process works in this manner. You will get exactly what you ask for in the way that you ask for it. So bring it into the now by visualizing it as already in your possession. This is the difference between creative mental activity and daydreaming. The daydreamer dreams about having something sometime in the nebulous future. The creative thinker brings his desire into reality by following the rules of creative thought. He visualizes the wish being fulfilled now. At this time, try the optokinetic wealth amplifier that we discussed earlier. You've now brought in the solar power and gathered it into the center of your forehead in the area of the third eye. Hold it here for a moment or two and feel it build into a virtual dynamo of cosmic energy. Now it is time to direct this vast storehouse of power to bring your desire into reality. Step 1. With your eyes still closed, make a screen on the inside of your eyelids. This is where your creative visualization will take place. Step 2. Project the object that you wish to have onto this screen. See it in all its glory. If it is the aforementioned car, run your mental hands over the steering wheel. Even kick the tires if you wish. Smell the new car smell that you noticed when you sat in the showroom. Bring it to life. See its color. Know that it is yours now. You are now ready for the next step that will bring this object of your affections into your life. Magic Wealth Trigger When you bring the objects of your desire into your life, you also need the means to support them. For instance, let us assume you ask for a new house and get it. Now you will want new furniture, some landscaping, draperies, and so on. There will be higher taxes to pay, the cost of moving, and many incidentals that accompany the acquisition of a new house. The monthly payments will no doubt be higher than you are paying now. You may even want to change your lifestyle somewhat so that you can share your new home with friends. You will probably make some new friends who are more affluent than you are now. They will show you a way of life that is more fulfilling than your present lifestyle. Do not be perturbed by this need for more money to support your new home. It is this very need that stimulates a strong desire to create a wealth consciousness. This wealth consciousness or awareness is a necessary state of mind if you are to acquire wealth. All affluent people have it. The person who has never had money is not really aware of its existence except as a nebulous, fanciful thing that wealthy people have. Unless you are already wealthy, you need some powerful way to assist you in building your first step on the path to wealth. You need assistance in removing yourself from the treadmill of a poverty consciousness. Now let us get back to the new automobile you have requested. You will probably want many other things that go with the ownership of a new car. So the next step in the solar kinetic process is to create a large sum of money. This is done with the magic wealth trigger. After you have completed step two in creating the magic video scope, repeat the following magic wealth trigger invocation in a firm, positive tone out loud if you are alone. If you're not alone, do it mentally. I command the wealth I desire to come to me now. I command it with my full power. Come to me wealth. It is done. So be it. Become a part of having your wish fulfilled. You have now ordered the car you desire and commanded the accompanying wealth to come to you. You have affirmed that it is done. Now assume the position of having your wish fulfilled. Project your car onto your magic video scope and put yourself in the car. 
Don't just picture yourself in the car, actually be in the car. In other words, now you and the car are both on the magic video scope. Sit in this car, know that it is yours. Feel the pride of ownership this card will bring to you. Bring as much emotion as you can into this scene. Let tears come to your eyes. Tears of elation and joy. This car is really yours. Emotion is a very important part of this ritual. It is the stimulant that sets the creative process in motion. So unleash your emotions. Feel as strongly about this car as you will when it is delivered at your door. It is done. Now let us review these foregoing steps to the realization of your desire. 1. Sit quietly and chant OM three times. 2. With your eyes closed, bring in solar energy and center it in the area of the third eye in the middle of your forehead between your two physical eyes. 3. Project your desired object onto the video scope on the inside of your eyelids. 4. Speak the magic wealth trigger invocation. These four simple steps will take about 5 or 10 minutes the first time you do them. After that, you will probably be able to complete them in 5 minutes or less. This is all that is required for you to use the fantastic solar kinetic power that can fulfill your most extravagant wishes. After using it, know that your wish is being fulfilled. It is done. Millicent used the magic wealth trigger, which brought her a diamond pendant. Millicent, a working girl of modest means, had an obsession. She wanted a diamond pendant. Millicent had seen this beautiful diamond pendant in the window of a jewelry store. On an impulse, she went into the store and asked the jeweler to show it to her. She held it up to her neck and admired it in the small mirror on the counter. She knew that she must have this pendant, but when she asked the price, she was told it was $5,000. There was no way Millicent could afford this luxury. Her job barely took care of the modest rent on her apartment, her car payments, and the other necessities of life, but this made no difference in her desire for this beautiful diamond pendant that she had set her heart on. When she told me about the pendant, she said, I know that I have no business wanting something so much when I can't afford it, but I feel so strongly about this that somehow I must have this beautiful piece of jewelry. Does this sound stupid to you? I told her about the magic wealth trigger, and it's a miraculous power. She said that she would go right home and use it, because if the tremendous emotional impact the pendant had created in her, she knew that she would have no trouble visualizing the diamond. When I saw her a month later, she had a diamond pendant. Her mother had inherited a beautiful pendant from an aunt who had died recently. Since the mother was a semi-invalid, she never went anywhere where she could wear this piece of jewelry. So she decided to give it to Millicent now instead of making her way to inherit it. The most uncanny thing about the whole affair was that it was an exact duplicate of the diamond pendant Millicent had seen and desired so greatly. Jack found a gold mine with the magic wealth trigger. Jack was 26 years old when he found out how powerful the magic wealth trigger could be. He had finished many years of advanced schooling and had acquired several college degrees. Yet, he hadn't been able to decide what he wanted to do with the rest of his life. That was why he planned to spend the summer camping in the Rocky Mountains. He hoped to use this time to think about his future so that he might finally reach a decision. It was a beautiful summer, and the days seemed to slip by at an ever-increasing rate. Jack set aside one hour every day to meditate on his search for the kind of work he would choose. His schooling was highly technical and really suited him only for teaching or research. He knew that he would prefer research, but he needed money. Research would require considerable financing, 
as yet he had been unable to obtain financial support. After a few weeks, he had reached an impasse. Then, one day during his meditation, he remembered the things he had learned in one of my classes about the magic wealth trigger. Now, he had the means to solve his problem. He reasoned that since he had a strong desire to do research, all he needed now was financial backing. He decided to concentrate on a source of money that he could find in the mountains. He was trained in geology, so why shouldn't he use the magic wealth trigger to find a mine? This could provide a continuing income to support his research. After using the magic wealth trigger invocation, he started to look for evidence of what might prove to be a valuable metal ore. Several days went by and he found nothing. Again, he used the ritual and again nothing happened. However, after the third time, something happened. Early one morning, he discovered an abandoned mine. After much testing and picking, he discovered that a major vein of gold ore existed just a few feet from where the former mining company had stopped. He was able to file a claim on his find, which proved to be substantial. He could now start on his life's work. A retiree living on a pittance found untold wealth. One of the most difficult habits to break is that of thinking of oneself as poor. It becomes an excuse for not trying to better one's lot in life. Mary and Robert had slipped into just a thought pattern. They were continually saying, We can't get this. We are too poor now that we are retired. Another remark often heard around their home was, We are on a set income now, so we'll just have to get along on less. Robert had retired at 60 and now five years later he was having serious financial problems. Inflation and extra medical expenses had sapped his savings. Mary and Robert had slipped into the habit of thinking of themselves as poor. Of course, they had a little money, but this kind of thinking only made it more likely that things would never get better. When they came to me with their problem, I told them to attend some of my classes. The first one was all about the magic wealth trigger. They used it to visualize in succession a new car, a new house, money in the bank, and a more affluent life. Several weeks later, several things began to happen to make their wishes come true. First, Mary's wealthy aunt decided to make them a substantial gift of stocks and bonds rather than leave them a will. The same week, Mary found a valuable necklace and received a reward of $250. The next week, Robert found three sheets of airmail stamps that he had put away in his stamp collection years ago. These had now become rare and were worth a tremendous amount of money. This same week, he received a 15% cost of living increase in his pension. The big payoff came during the third week. Mary and Robert were selected as participants on a TV giveaway show. They won $10,000 in prizes and cash. You can use the magic wealth trigger to find untold wealth. Now you no longer need to think of yourself as poor. You may be temporarily without the funds that you want, but you are not poor. You now have the power to change your whole outlook on life. Any amount of wealth that you could imagine can be yours. You can rise up out of your old world of needless want and privation. You no longer want to deny yourself anything that you set your heart on. So whenever you wish to bring something wonderful into your life, let the magic wealth trigger bring it to you. Use it constantly and I promise you a life of joy and abundance of good things. Yes, even great wealth can come to you with the magic wealth trigger. There is only one rule to follow. Use it. Now, there are a bunch of other really good techniques in this book, and I can only recommend that you get the book. And I'm sorry when I recommend these books that they disappear, but they should come back at some point. I wish I had control over that. The first thing I wanted to do was do the perfect health invocation. I'll give a few more techniques without any of the personal stories that are added on to it, but understand she has stories for each of these techniques that she recommends. The perfect health invocation. She says to begin by the first step in the solar kinetic healing process is to bring a gigantic charge of solar energy. When this energy is released into your body, its healing ability will astound you. 
The cosmic rays of the sun will perform in a dual manner, as you have been told earlier. The subtle energy derived from your visualization of the sun will add an enormous charge of vitality to your invocations. You have probably heard many times that thoughts are things. A thought contains substance, intelligence, and direction. When you energize a thought with the mighty power of the sun, it becomes a hundred times more effective. When you aim this thought at a target, it will go where it is sent with all the forces of an arrow when it is shot from a bow. Your sun spirits will carry it there the instant the thought is formed. The energy generated from solar visualization has a great healing power when this energy is brought into your body. It charges your aura just as a dead battery is recharged by electricity. Your body then draws the energy from your aura to heal your affliction. There is rapidly growing technology called Kirlian photography. It was developed in Russia with this process. The aura has been photographed. These photographs have proved conclusively that an ill person has a dim, retracted aura, while the same person when healed has a brilliant extended aura. The difference, of course, is the amount of cosmic energy contained in the aura. So you can see how the addition of a powerful charge of solar energy added to the aura will be absorbed by your body to bring about healing. The presence of an aura was at one time only speculated by most people. It could only be seen by clairvoyance. Now, with the advent of Curlian photography, the existence of your aura has been scientifically proven. This opens up a new world of investigation by science. In fact, psychic healing is becoming accepted as fact by more and more of our scientific community. Our method of using solar energy is one of the most effective ways of healing known. It goes directly to the source of the problem, your low supply of vital energy. As soon as this vital energy is built up, the healing will start to take place. To fill this storehouse of energy to top capacity, you will use the solar kinetic ritual of gathering the sun's energy and concentrating it. However, instead of bringing it into the third eye area, draw it into a brilliant ball of white light just above your head. Visualize this solar energy filling the ball of light and concentrating its energy until the ball becomes a veritable dynamo of charged power. Now set the ball in motion. See it swirl faster and faster as it remains just above your head. Now bring this ball of brilliant sun power into your body. Slowly, let it come into your head first. Move it through the body, stopping at the point to be healed for an extra moment or two. Then bring this ball of energy down through the whole body. Feel yourself absorb this vital life force as the ball of light travels through your body. Create health image on opto video screen. Now project an image of yourself onto the metal screen of your mind. Feel the joy of being well, being completely healed. Enjoy the wonder of being free from pain and discomfort. Visualize a bright shining aura extending out from your body about three feet. Feel as though you are bathed in this magnificent white light that fills your body and your aura. Know that you are being revitalized and renewed. Your body knows how to repair itself. You have now given it the needed vital life force. Revel in the joy of being healed. Experience the total transformation that is taking place in your body. You are now the living power of God. You have put your own creative healing forces to work. The same intelligence that built your body is now using the vital life force that you have given it to heal and repair what it is built. Smile, let tears of joy come. Know that the mighty healing energy from the sun fills every cell of your body. You can feel a pleasant tingling as it travels through your body healing and putting everything in order perfect health invocation now it is time to reinforce your healing ritual with a good strong command this will take the form of a powerful invocation you will give this invocation even more power by strengthening it with concentrated solar energy sit quietly in a chair for a moment and chant the word om three times then visualize the powerful rays of the sun streaming down to you. Bring this magnificent energy in through the top of your head, letting it gather in the area of your third eye. 
After doing this for a moment, be aware of the concentrated power you now have at your command. You are ready to send out your invocation. As you send it out, release the magnificent store of concentrated solar energy to accompany your invocation. The following is your creative command that will finalize your healing. I command perfect health to come to me. All illness or injury must drop away because it does not belong to me. I command perfect health with my full soul power. I demand it to come to me now. So be it. It is done. You have spoken the word. Let go now and let the creativity of the God power within you do its healing work. You are one with that power. It fills your body and extends to the atmosphere around you. Have faith in the fulfillment of the word you have spoken. Remember, you are the creator as well as the receiver of this healing power. The healing is accomplished. The next technique is the power spectrum accumulator. And she tells you to project yourself into the vibrant power filled video scope that you place before you and you feel the surge after surge of power enter your body as you draw upon the vital cosmic energy stored in the videoscope. Feel yourself take on the stature of a giant as you become completely immersed in the sea of magnificent solar energy. Let your mind and body become one with the infinite power of the universe. Know that your mind is a part of the great universal mind that created the universe. Let the power and the glory of this thought fill your soul. After playing out the drama of seeing your wish fulfilled, take a moment or two of quiet contemplation. Feel the gathering of power that has taken place within you. No longer do you feel that you must wait for God's will to manifest and tell you what to do. You have put your own wonderful creative forces to work to bring about what you desire. You are the captain of your ship. You control its destination. You have brought in the great universal power and intelligence that knows how to weather any storm. This power and intelligence is now a part of your mind. It gives you the wisdom and strength to meet and conquer any situation. As these wonderful realizations fill your mind, turn your attention to the ball of swirling white light once again. Sense the powerful force issuing from this concentrated ball of energy. Now, with a firm conviction that will allow no negation speak the following invocation power spectrum accumulator I command this solar energy to accumulate in my body as it permeates every cell all the power of universal mind is mine moment by moment I become more powerful my sleeping giant of power has been aroused I am filled with the mighty vibrant forces of universal power. Everyone who comes near me will feel my strength. It is done, so be it. The next technique that I found is in another chapter to go over and that is generate powerful solar electrostatic force barrier. She explains to build your protective electrostatic force barrier, you will once again harness the mighty benevolent rays of solar energy. Once this powerful barrier is erected, nothing of a negative nature will be able to penetrate it. You will not only be free of any future psychic attack, but all negative thought forms that are now attached to your aura will disintegrate and drop away from you. In preparation for the erection of the electrostatic force barrier, locate yourself in a quiet place in your house. Seat yourself in a comfortable position and prepare to put all mundane thoughts out of your mind. Bring to your conscious awareness some lovely restful scene that you can visualize clearly. If you wish, let it be a mental recreation of a beautiful scene that you have witnessed recently. Imagine a spectacular sunset, an interesting cloud formation, a visit to a park, or any other lovely panorama of natural beauty. Visualizations of this nature quiet the mind and bring about beautiful emotions of love that will prepare you for any ritual of a spiritual nature. Now you chant the word Om six times, holding each sound for a full breath. If there are other people present in the house, you may not wish to chant in full voice. In this case, you may use a very quiet, subdued voice. However, 
if you can, produce a full resonant sound as you chant OM. The beautiful sound will raise your vibrations in preparation for the solar power to enter your body. The next step will be to bring the powerful psychic energy of the sun into your head to power the dynamo, to build your mighty force field of protection. To do this, close your eyes and visualize the sun's rays carrying warmth and energy to the earth. Drawing these rays of cosmic energy into your head, do this until you feel that your head is filled to capacity with this heavenly power. Now concentrate all this power into a ball of white light and place it in your third eye area between your physical eyes in the middle of your forehead. Know that this ball of concentrated energy has so much power contained in it that it cannot be depleted. It is connected to its source, the sun. So as you draw power from it, more power will come unto it. No matter how much you use, there will still be a full supply to you. Your sun spirits will multiply this power as they spring into action to serve you. Open your eyes and mentally outline an area directly in front of you about seven feet high, three feet wide by three feet deep. This is the area that you are going to fill with solar energy. Now, as you look at the area you have outlined, direct the concentrated solar power that you have stored into it. Fill it to capacity with this vibrant power. Take a few steps to the force field you have created and step into it. Feel the mighty power that surrounds you. The energy that is locked up in the atoms of this mighty force field could blow a city apart if its power were unleashed. Realize this as you stand inside your force field contemplating its power. Give your command and expand the barrier. As you stand inside the area surrounded by this powerful electrostatic force barrier, concentrate for just a moment on the ball of white light in your third eye. Feel the tremendous solar energy centered there and know that you are going to draw on it to give strength to the command you are about to give. In a purposeful tone of voice, give the following command. The powerful electrostatic force barrier that I have erected will protect me from psychic attack of any and all kinds. This magnificent force field will be with me no matter where I go. No negative thought form or spirit entity of any kind can penetrate it. I am inside an impenetrable fortress where no harm can reach me. I am protected from all negativity and evil. It is done, so be it. After you have given the command, once you bring your attention to the electrostatic force barrier with your eyes closed center your attention on this field of energy mentally give the force barrier an added burst of energy from your ball of white light see the barrier flare up as it becomes more power filled extend its outer limits to about six feet away from your body and above your head you now have a magnificent force field of fantastic power and energy surrounding your body this will travel with you wherever you go. Actually, you have energized and expanded your own aura so that your force field has become a part of you. Any negative thought forms that may have previously attached themselves to your aura will become incompatible with the environment you have created. They will detach themselves and fall away. If you wish to make sure that this happens immediately, give the following command at this time. All negative thought forms that are attached to my aura are now being destroyed. They are dissolving into their natural state of nothingness as they drop away from me. I command them all to leave me now. I command this with my full soul power. It is done, so be it. And the final technique, of course we had to find it, was a beautiful technique on how to bring the one that you love to you. So first of all, the first step in the ritual that you will bring a loved one to you is to fill your mind with a huge supply of solar energy. This will make your visualization come to life and it will add power to your incantations. Find a quiet place in your home where you can be alone. Seat yourself comfortably in a chair and quiet your mind. The best way to do this is to bring your mind to a beautiful, peaceful scene, as before. It can be a scene that you have actually viewed or an imagined one. 
with your inner vision see the sun high above realize the immense power contained within it now start the flow of this power into your head keep this flow of power coming in until your head feels like a huge balloon your whole body tingles with this fantastic energy from the sun as your army of sun spirits gathers around you anxious to help you attain your heart's desire mentally gather this energy into a tight little ball of white light about the size of a golf ball this ball of concentrated energy is attached to the sun as you use the energy from it for your ritual more power will keep coming in you cannot deplete it place the ball of white light in the area of your third eye between your two physical eyes it is now ready for use in the next step of your ritual to bring love to you project love one onto magic video scope you're going to build a powerful video scope to bring you and your loved one together directly in front of you outline an area about seven feet high by six feet wide by six deep with your eyes open send solar power to the area you have outlined keep filling it with this fantastic energy until it seems to come to life you now have your magic video scope once again close your eyes and see the image of your loved one place this image within the magic video scope in front of you see every detail of the face and figure as the image of your loved one seems to glow with life speak the following powerful desire incantation I plant the seed of desire in the image of my love on this video scope the power that I am sending to it will make the flame of love spring forth in the heart of and say their name he or she becomes aware of my love and she or he loves me in return as I project my solar energy to this image of my loved one the powerful love force grows to mighty proportions to enfold both of us in its loving embrace I command this with my full soul power it is done so be it and so that is some really interesting concepts you'll notice they're very similar to what a lot of meditators normally do we bring light and love all the time I tell you in my meditations to bring in light through the top of your head and then down through your feet we have discussed in multiple episodes uh, regarding transurfing and chakras of the way that energy moves up and down your body and particularly in transurfing they talk about the energy fountaining off into an aura around you so what she's doing is very similar to that there's nothing complicated about this it's just an interesting thing to do is to create boxes of light and then walk into them I think this used in conjunction with the mana meditation could be truly mind-boggling and we'll have to go back to the meditation maybe create another one based on some of these principles please use this video as an experiment we don't know if this stuff works or not I have definitely used stuff like this for a very long time and it works the main thing that Madeline C Morris is teaching is you can pray or hope or visualize or manifest whatever words that you want to put on it but it needs energy once I started you doing Qigong and imagining energy going with my manifestations everything changed there is an energetic component the energy that is used somehow the energy is expended somehow you're not depleting yourself of energy but you're using this energy and certain energies the way she applies it is a very effective way of just making sure you're visualizing intelligent energy being used towards what it is your mind wants to create obviously there is a powerful essence of light that's involved in this and what we're doing is we're coming into a place where we are able to communicate with the light to become one with all the environment around us is a part of that so using the Sun as a way of visualizing almost 
of pulling in the light is a powerful technique. And these different techniques to protect yourself, to find love, to find money can all be very powerful. And I would just love to know if it was effective for you and let anybody else know. People are going to try this out. So in the comments, please make sure to say if you found love, if you found money, if these things worked, if you find a, a way to change it up or a way to, to add to it, place that in the comments as well. All that information is important. Whenever we're experimenting with reality creation, it's like art. You have a ton of different paints. When you have, if you've ever painted before, there's a bunch of different styles and kinds of paints, just like there's a bunch of styles and kinds of manifesting. There's different ways of visualizing. There's different ways of bringing energy. Each one of these works. That's the amazing thing about it. Some works better for some people, and it depends. Some people are more tuned into the sun, and they may find this to be more effective. So just imagine, there's not one way to do this, but this is one of the ways. This is another tool that you have in your toolbox, and you can add to it. The accumulation of all of these techniques used together becomes overwhelmingly powerful. And that is what you are now. If you've been following my podcast, you've been trying these meditations and applying these techniques, you have completely transformed your life by now. I don't know when you started listening to me, but I promise you that this stuff will accumulate. I don't know where you're at in your life right now, but I promise I understand. It can be hard. It can feel like there's no hope. It can feel like these techniques are all BS that it doesn't work. And I just want you to believe if something's not working, try something different, test it, experiment with it, test yourself. That's what Neville Goddard says to do, which by the way, I saw a lot of things and discussions in this book, very similar to Neville Goddard. She's talking about the wish fulfilled and the method of visualization is exactly the same. So I would like to know if Madeline C. Morris's relatives are out there. If anybody knows about these books, I would love to talk with them. Please email me and I would love to talk about this further and get to know more about Madeline C. Morris's life. If you check out that last episode, she was a priest in the cosmic church, as far as we know, and there's very little else that's talked about. She has these two books and that's all we know. She could have been writing under a pseudonym as many of the authors with the Parker Publishing did. Her writing feels sincere and authentic, and I think she's on to something. This discussion of communicating with the higher self using the sun and mana seems to be a part of this process. And the only way we can find out is if we work together and experiment and share our stories. So thank you. Check out my book if you get a chance, The Reality Revolution, The Mind-Blowing Movement to Hack Your Reality. And please leave a review if you can. I'd greatly appreciate it. I love you all so much, and I am sending out solar energy right now. I'm creating a video scope that is so amazing, and I'm sending out this solar energy to everyone to enhance your lives, to enhance your manifestations, to bring you hope, happiness, to bring you whatever it is that you wish. Thank you for sharing this time with me. I cannot tell you how grateful I am to be able to go on these wonderful excursions and have somebody else share it with me. It means so much. It's so exciting. All episodes of The Reality Revolution can be found at therealityrevolution.com. And welcome to the reality revolution.